In the first session, we gave you an overview about the EOS features. If you missed the first session, no problem, you can review it here at YouTube. Today, I would like to go a little bit deeper into the details. So, this is the second of the three videos. Part 2, Printing in Standalone Mode. That leads us to the first question. What does Standalone Mode mean? Space is usually very expensive and not everywhere available. That means no space for a big printer and no space for a big PC. The printer has to do its job without an attached PC or, in other words, in standalone mode. So, printer without permanent PC connection. And what are the benefits? Well, as I told you, saving space, no extra costs for the PC, no extra costs for the maintenance and service on the PC. And the usage of the printer's internal intelligence. In a few seconds, you will see what I mean. But stop. First of all, we need to feed our EOS with the label formats. And for this setup, we need a PC. But only for the setup. How that works will be shown now. To use the standalone mode, we have nice possibilities with cap label, which comes with each printer. So the cap label light version is uh, in the package if you get your printer. What I have here is the cap label S3 Pro version can do a little more things. So nevertheless, what we are doing is we create a new label and uh, I use a label size here of 100 millimeter width and 68 millimeter height. And here we go. So we have our label on screen. What we want to do now is I just insert one text field, clicking on the prompt possibility here. You see, I uh, want to go standalone. This is preset here. It's OK. And the prompted text. Let's keep it easy. Key in the name. This is what I want to see here in the display. And the default value is prompt. You can keep this here or you change it into Jim. And furthermore, we would have a possibility to use a choice list do not use this right now. We have the input mask with the possibility to allow only for digits or for alpha, signs, etc. And we can really do a nice masking of this input field, including the input length, etc. So press OK. We insert the name here, the name field. Enlarge it a little bit so we see it a little bit better. Jim is big enough now. And um, what we have to do now is we have to save it on the printer's memory. So we go to General, select Save to Memory Card, click on here. And the next window opens and we see two different printers. These are the two printers which are installed here on this PC. And we select EOS. And furthermore, now we have the possibility to save the file to a card reader, which might be connected to the PC or to file, so anywhere on our hard disk, or we send it directly to the printer. The location where we save the label is preset as default, so it depends on what is your default drive here. We have two possibilities, USB memory and the internal flash file system, we call that IFFS. Or you can directly select which memory you want to have. So as we do not have a USB memory stick here, we decide for the internal flash file system. Then we have the file name. We call that label1. And furthermore, we have a couple of possibilities to uh, preset that the printer asks for the quantity that we print infinite labels, etc. That's enough for the moment. So the label is transmitted to the printer. It appears here on screen. <clears throat> and now we have the possibility that we press enter or change the name by clicking here on this input mask on the keys. So press enter and we have what we need. As we downloaded this to the 
print as memory, it's very easy. We go on storage device, load label, look for the label, label one, which is located here. And we have this with the preset name again on screen. And now we could key in another name. It's possible here directly in the display, but uh, this is for very simple applications. If you want to have it a little more comfortable, we recommend to use a keyboard. What we are using here is a keyboard from the company called Cherry. They have really good quality keyboards and from the size it fits very nice to the, to the printer. It's a standard keyboard which is used on PCs also. So <clears throat> plug it in and if you are lucky it requires less than 100 milliamps. This is the case with our Cherry keyboards. So now we can key in another name, key in Joe or maybe Susan, oh, it might be too long. So Joe is okay for now. And now we have our label here with a variable data. So that allows you to key in whatever you like. You can generate multiple lines of input. You can uh, recall also the label with the keyboard directly from the printer. That's F1, which you have to press. Now we go down to label one. Here we are. Change the name again. Jim comes back. And we print the next label. The button F2 repeats the last label. And if I press F3, it repeats the last input from the label so that I can key in my information, print the label, and immediately go back to the input mask without recalling the label from the printer's memory. And furthermore, we have F8, which, oops, here we are, which does a form feed if the printer is in ready mode. So this is how it works with a keyboard and with a display on EOS. Very simple to do, very easy to generate with a software which comes with a printer. Think that was really simple to do, what do you mean? At this point, I would tell you following. We always discuss internally where we should start and where we should stop our explanations. And that's very hard to find the right point. So we use the software cap label, which is shipped with each printer. How this can be installed and which features are available might be interesting, but it would not fit to our theme today. So it's uh, something for other sessions. Let us now attach a scanner to our EOS to simplify the data entry. To recall a label with a barcode scanner requires that we generate a barcode which simulates the F1 button of the keyboard followed by the label name. Now the question is, Using a keyboard, that's really nice, but is that all? So, no, by the way, we can do a couple of more things. For example, we can connect a barcode scanner. We use this from Opticon. They are really good quality and the big part is they require less than 100 milliamps of power. So plug it in here. And then you are prepared to recall the label from your EOS. But uh, what do we need? We need a barcode which, co which contains the name of the label. So I prepared something here. I have a label which I called, was it? Cable okay, recall. So it contains a couple of barcodes. Um, I have the label cable D and cable E with a F1 in the beginning. So the F1 is a special command which simulates the F1 here of the keyboard, so we do the same procedure. To create this barcode, it's also very simple. We go to barcodes. We selected uh, code 121 because it contains all characters. So that's the easiest selection. Technically, every barcode more or less would work as long as we uh, allow for the for the data which are required in the name of the label. So code 128 uh, is the selection which I recommend. So you can also use human readable here or without. Here we have F1 cable D. Press OK and 
we have this spark out here, F1 cable E was the label which we just printed. So all we have to do is to print this label now. Furthermore, in the case if I modify the label for the input of uh, amount of labels, there are just numbers where I can uh, recall one label or two labels or three labels. Okay, so let's print this. EOS 1, print one label. So that's what we need. And now we are prepared to recall the label directly with the barcode, scan it. We see now we have the selection list. We can scroll down here or directly touch it here, press enter and print the label. Next time I save it with a higher speed, but uh, it shows what I wanted to show. It's the color here, we have gray. Uh, but also this is possible to scan. So therefore I prepared also another label, which I recall right now. Where is it? Colors. Label which just contains blue, yellow, gray, orange, red, and furthermore violet. So just my colors, which I want to scan. I print this label. EOS is selected, go to print. And then I have what I need. So, also cancel this here. Recall the label from here, scan my preferred color, and print the label here. And now we have what we need. So, you see, it is possible to scan a barcode, to key in the data here with a keyboard, or to use the built-in display to key in whatever you need. Either just take the scanner or the keyboard or the display or all together. You can mix it uh, whatever you like. But this is also not the end. We can do a couple of more things. Just to remember, the display can be used also with gloves, which is a very important feature. If you ever try to use your smartphone with normal gloves, then you understand what I mean. We created a short and nice combination. And by the way, you can stack multiple requests or prompts for a bunch of entry data. Let us see what else can be done and let us add an additional external component. Which component? You will see it right now. If you think that's all, then you might be wrong. So we have a couple of more things which EOS can do. For example, in this case, I organized the scale which I connected here to the printer. The scale is equipped with a serial interface. That means we need an adapter to connect the serial interface to the USB interface in the rear side of the printer. Furthermore, I would like to tell you this is a scale from a company called CAN, also Metla Toledo might be known in your country. It depends on where you are. Uh, you may look around for a scale manufacturer which offers this possibility so that you can connect the scale to the printer. So electrical connection is done with a USB and serial converter. Uh, now we need the label in the printer. I prepared something here created by cap label and I want to show you something else. Uh, once you printed this label here then if you go to general it's possible that you use the JScript viewer and the JScript viewer shows the data which is transmitted from cap label to the printer. So for those of you who are able to do a direct programming, just copy that, copy it to your preferred WordPad or uh, preferred text editor. What I'm using here is Notepad++ which is a free of charge open source program which you can download from the internet. Just google for Notepad++. So a very nice editor and um, I modified the label a little bit. I played around a little bit here, so it, uh, um, I made some, some adjustments. Furthermore, I added a field for the date so that the printer will recall the date from its internal clock. Printing date and time in standalone mode is something uh, which is often not available on, on the big size printers. EOS has this functionality, EOS has a real-time clock which is built in. 
I want to print the date here and I set the date to the 14th of October 2025 so uh, that you see something happens. What we'll do? We set up a FTP connection to the printer and I just download the file here by clicking on this icon. Download it and now the label scale E1.lbl is in the printer. How this works, how you can program in JScript and how it works to connect with uh, FTP is something which we will show in a separate session. So that might be too much for this what I wanted to, sh to show today. By the way, what I did is this part here is JScript which is the printer's internal programming language. And here we use ABC, a uh, short name for Advanced Basic Compiler. So we implemented a complete basic language additional to the normal programming language so that you have the possibility to program a lot of things around whatever you need. If you are able to do this, if you are one of these great programmers, um, you really will enjoy it. If you have no idea about programming, don't hesitate to ask us talk to our service. We have a lot of uh, really good educated guys there who will help you or will write the code for you. And if it is very complex, we make you an offer uh, how much it might cost uh, if it is a very complex um, equipment which you want to, to run on the EOS. Okay, now the, the label is in the printer. We can go to storage device or we recall it directly from here. We load the label. Label name is scale E1, okay, in this case I use uh, the keyboard, recall it. We are asked for the price per 100 grams, so in this case it's 3.44, might be dollars or yen or whatever it is. So here it is preset to US dollars as an example. We press the enter button and we see the number of labels, we want to print one label, it's also okay. And we get our first label out of this. What we can see is the date is a little bit too close to the um, to our currency. So I can change it, just modify it, wait a second, four millimeters and move it a little bit to the side. Again, this is something which will be displayed, uh, explained in a, in a other session. 65 millimeters might be enough. We try it. Download again. Cancel this to download. Sorry. Here we are. Recall the label F1, scale E1. Um, price is 3. Point, I change it in 55 makes it more interesting. <laughs> Not really. Okay, so printing one label and here we go. So have another position for the date. Now it's not nice, uh, but it's up to you where you want to see your date, your weight, your price for the, for the, um, uh, for the complete product. As you can see here, I made a little mistake. This is a German word for price but uh, hope you will understand it. And uh, as we are a German company, I can live with this. So, by the way, we want to put something on the scale, see how it works. So I have some batteries from a very well-known uh, company here, Vata. They are also cap customers. It's 94 grams. Don't know if you can see this here. We press the print button and we transmit the data. You see weight is 94 uh, grams, price is 2.82 US dollars and it's uh, on the date which I recall is the 14th of October 2025. Put this again. I asked here if I can take some squirrels or some, some birds on the scale. They said it makes no sense. So I prefer in this case to use some batteries. Print it again. Here we are and you see that's very simple. By the way, now it depends on how you uh, program your scale. I used this little piece of ABC because the scale sends me some information. It has some spaces in the front. Maybe you see the word Terra or Ter. 
uh, at grams or whatever you have behind. And uh, this is something which is too much on the label. So all I need here is just the, the value, 188 grams. So in this case, I used this ABC, this basic compiler, which cuts off the unused parts and implements it to my JScript data. It might not be a scale, it might be also something else. Can you imagine, so now start your head cinema, can you imagine you use a thermometer? You measure the temperature over a specific time and after you reach 10 values, after all 10, uh, after 10 minutes, um, then automatically the printer can print your label. Or you have a special tool, which I can often see in the automotive areas, where they have special testing tools, uh, measuring something, having the final value, print this directly here on the, on the label, and uh, then you have all the data which you need. So it's just limited by the application, by the requirement, and by your own ideas which you have to get this work. And by the way, if you need some help, please ask us. Again, our engineers are very well educated. If you have uh, any questions how to program something, we are pleased to help you. We make these printers for your application and uh, whenever you have something really strange or need a very special solution, please ask us. In a lot of cases, we have some good ideas for you. We had a short view to the printer's programming language. The code could be optimized, but I wrote it a few lines just quick and dirty, but good enough to show what I wanted to show. Programming EOS might also be a theme for another video. Let me repeat what we did. Creating labels with cap label. Connection of a standard keyboard and a barcode scanner. Everything for an affordable price. Connection of a scale or some test equipment is easy to do. And if you need additional help, please contact our technical support. They are happy to help you. The third video will show the network capabilities of EOS very interesting and very, very powerful features. See you next time.